All right, so finally doing my video on the Mobi 6 Eco 2024 edition, and this has the new HD Zero Eco VTX and camera. And I got some important information about this model. I'm going to share that throughout this video. The, my findings are quite a bit different than probably some of the other initial reviews you've seen. So I encourage you to watch the whole video to get all the details on my experiences with this one because it's quite a bit different than uh, probably what you've already watched from other channels. So the model itself is very similar to the analog version. So I already did a review on the analog version. I will link that in the video description. I also have the older version of the HD Zero Mobula 6 from, I figure it's from maybe a year or two ago. I forget when this came out. I still have this one. And I'll do some weight comparisons here in a moment here. But basically they've got the updated um, VTX and Cameron here that's a little bit lighter along with the other components that have lightened up the Mobula 6 for 2024. The frame is the same, just a different color. Uh, I believe the canopy is uh, similar to the analog version but it is made for the HD0 camera. We'll talk about that here also shortly. The motors are the same, these 0702, I think these are 28,000 kV motors on both and the Jump Fan 1208 tri-bladed props. And also just a different color so instead of the charcoal gray you have the clear theme on everything here on the uh, HD0 version. So same frame, it's basically about the same canopy, props, motors, flight controllers are different. So on the analog version you have the uh, Super X ELRS, um, specifically made for this, uh, With it's got the newer version with the VTX built in. And on the HD Zero, they're using a uh, Super HD ELRS, and this one has no analog VTX on there, obviously because it's made for HD Zero. So slightly uh, different board, um, about the same shape. There's kind of like that curve shape there. So for those of you wondering if this this board will fit in like the the Mobula, I'm sorry, the uh, Meteor 65 Pro frame, um, it will. I haven't actually pulled these parts out to test that, but pretty sure. I'm like 99% sure that it'll fit, no problem. If you're wondering, but yeah, the HD Zero version has a slightly different all-in-one with no VTX, because it's not needed. You got the same uh, battery connector here as the uh, GMB A20. Uh, similar issue with the uh, battery connection. So again, I encourage you to watch the uh, analog version. Uh, the battery um, cable here has to be kind of bent like this to get that battery plugged in there. So I talked about that in the previous version, or the previous video in the analog version. Uh, for some weird reason, they're using the motor plugs on this one, which is odd, because it adds a lot of unnecessary weight. They could have easily just soldered the motor wires like they did on the uh, analog version, but uh, I, maybe people complained that they can't swap their motors. But honestly, um, I would prefer lighter a lighter setup and just solder the motors on versus, because the motors very rarely burn out on these where you have to change them out. It's, you would have to, I mean, you have to fly it a long time and crash it a lot. I've personally never had a motor burn out on me from a crash. Now I know there's some people that are inexperienced and they've um, perhaps used turtle mode in where the props are obstructed and then, okay, so then they go full throttle, and of course that'll burn on the motor. And that's just basically user error, pilot error, because they don't know what they're doing. Um, most people that know what they're doing, I think that having soldered motor wires is better. I would rather not have the weight. It's just carrying a lot of extra weight around here, and I'll show you how much more this weighs. It's significantly more. And I believe those motor wire plugs do um, make a difference there in adding additional weight. And then, of course, we have the uh, HD Zero Eco VTX here. This is their lightest and, I guess, cheapest. It's about $20 cheaper, I think, than the standard one that came out in the previous version here. And they look really similar. If you just kind of look at it kind of, you know, not really very, very closely. You, know, so you can see the uh, antenna connector is in about the same spot. Um, but they've gotten rid of the MIPI connector. So this connector right here, this MIPI connector is now gone. We have soldered wires here. And instead of a MIPI cable, there's only four wires that go to the camera. So the camera is obviously a little bit different. It's still digital, but I'm not 100% sure if it's like the same HD Zero 
uh, digital. It's kind of like a hybrid between analog and digital. Some of you uh, HD0 experts out there, maybe you guys can explain um, the exact differences between the camera. Because the cameras are quite different, much larger lens. I believe the camera itself is quite a bit heavier while you're getting rid of the weight of the MIPI cable and that MIPI cable connector. Uh, you're adding additional weight here with the bigger camera and that, that big lens there. So I think it kind of cancels each other out. So if you look at the weight of these, this is, this is where it's going to make a difference. So this is the old version with the 0802 motors, the bi-bladed props, the old frame, old canopy, and this is how much it weighs. It's uh, 23.9 grams. And then the new version with the lighter frame, lighter motors, you know, overall lighter setup, it's still coming in at, uh, what is this, 23.36, almost 23.4 grams. So you're, what was it, what's the, what's the difference here? It's about half a gram. Yeah, 23.9 versus 23.4-ish. Uh, it's about half a gram difference between the old HD0 version and the new HD0 version. And you guys can watch the video on this one here. Uh, I'll link that in the video description. Wasn't that impressed with the flight performance this one. And likewise, I'm not that impressed with the flight performance on this one either because uh, while it is a, bit, a little bit lighter, uh, the motors are smaller, so you're carrying about almost the same amount of weight. Uh, the battery connector does make a difference because this is still using the old PH 2.0 connector on the old version, and now we're using the new A20 connector, so we can use these, you know, BT 2.0 batteries. I've got the tattoo here and the beta FPV one that I reviewed in the previous version on the analog version. And uh, so speaking of the analog version, let's just go and show you that way in case you forgot. It's 17.7 ish, so it's a uh, almost a six gram difference, like 5.7 ish, 5.8 gram difference between the analog version and the HD zero version. And that, that's huge. And so, you know, you know, carrying around the same amount of battery here. So let's say we'll put on the tattoo here. It's like 25.9 with the battery on the analog version, but then you go to the HD zero version with the, with the battery. Yeah, it's like 31 and a half, 31 points, 31 point six almost. So it's a big, big difference in terms of flight performance. And likewise, the flight time is much lower as well. So I get like roughly three minutes and just kind of flying around the house, uh, perhaps a little bit less, you know, nothing like the flight time on this one. So that, that five-ish, you know, five and a half grams difference really makes a difference in terms of flight uh, time and flight performance. So I didn't feel like I could do any kind of flippy floppies with this one at all or any kind of acro maneuvers, whereas uh, the analog version really felt agile in the air. I just felt I could pretty much do whatever I wanted with it because the uh, power to weight ratio was much, much better on the analog version versus the HD zero version. And, you know, you don't get, the, you know, uh, the same flight performance in terms of, um, the agility and just not even doing acro stuff, just typical like type racing type stuff. You, you really have to uh, watch how you're turning your corners and stuff. Um, requires quite a bit more throttle. Yes, that doesn't seem like 5.5 or 5.7 grams makes that much of a difference, but in my opinion, it makes a pretty big difference. I, I don't know why, why the other people aren't really talking about this that much. Uh, in the other videos, I, I did, I've watched a couple of the videos and no one really talked about this, so it's kind of strange. That weight difference is a huge, I think it's a pretty big deal. And, and it's not that much lighter than the old version, so kind of surprised all, about all that. They really should have gotten rid of the, uh, motor wire, or the motor plugs and soldered the motors directly. And, you know, I, I'm not really sure what else they could have done to make it lighter because the HD0 system is a bit heavier. I would, you know, maybe use a different camera there. They got to use a lighter camera, I think. This is probably too heavy for uh, what they're trying to accomplish here. Now, to sort of circumvent this or get around this problem, you could probably move all these parts over to like a larger frame, maybe a 75 millimeter frame. Like, I know that new Meteor uh, 75 airframe just came out from BFPV. That might work with a bi-bladed 40 millimeter prop. Not sure how well those these 0702 motors are going to handle that larger prop. Probably not so great, but I haven't tested it, obviously. Now, here's the thing about the, the HD0 version that um, I'm going to tell you that from in my personal experience on this one, the 
the VCX doesn't seem to be transmitting video anymore. The power's on, and um, but I don't seem to get any kind of video out of this. So it's not, tr it's not transmitting anything uh, where it connects to the uh, receiver and I get video. I'm not sure when that happened exactly because I I did have a, I didn't really fly this that much before it stopped working. Maybe I got maybe about ten flights in, and I did crash it quite a bit in the house. I didn't take it outside. I didn't, didn't get run over by a car. I mean, for the most part, it looks pretty much brand new. And I'm not sure why, why it's not um, transmitting video anymore. I mean, the antenna still connected. Everything seems to be in order. I I did look very carefully at the board, make sure if all the components, the little parts, were still on on there it seems like that's the case uh, but i don't it's dead basically I, I, I see little lights and stuff but i get no video no connection to the receiver at all and i have no idea how like some very light crashes in the house could have caused this to die but I'm not surprised because out of all this, this the digital systems that i've used dgi walksnail and hg0 the uh, failure rate from crashes has been the most for me out of HD, uh, all the HD0 VTXs that I've owned. Those have died the most. Now, I know that other people have different experiences. Maybe, you know, walk snails died the most for them. But for me, personally, the HD0 VTXs are, have been fairly unreliable. And, um, I, you know, I haven't got a lot of flight time on a lot of these. So, you know, if you're considering maybe going from analog to HD0, I'm not sure I can recommend that. Um, you know, if you just look at the flights in the same, you know, basically downstairs in my house, on the analog, the analog video actually looks better and more flyable than the HG0 video. And I'm on the same power level, VTX power level, and literally flying just you know a few feet away from me, like no more than 20 feet away from me. And you get a lot of the video breakup on the HG0, whereas very little on the analog version. The analog version is much more flyable in my opinion than HD0, so I'm not, honestly, I don't really know, I don't understand the whole point of HD0 because uh, the whole point is to get better flight, um, I guess, flying experience, and for me, analog is still better than HD0, flying just a few feet away from me. So, that's been my experience with this one here, I'm probably, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one, um, not gonna, I'm not going to try and get a new VTX because I'm, I, I already know that because of the weight, it doesn't fly that great, so... No, you know, I'm just gonna probably uh, turn this into like a maybe like a DJI O3 conversion because I know that the uh, this board can do 2s, I believe. So I might do another uh, like a little 31 millimeter propeller DJI O3 or something like that for the future. So if that interests you, let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, for the most part, if you're you know if you're already an HG0, if you love it, I think that yeah, you know this is a nice little. Um, micro to fly around uh, to hit those tiny gaps but you know for those of you that already have HD0 you probably already know about the reliability of, of the VTX and everything and I, I've imagined that having this board exposed like this with this canopy it's very exposed here is probably the reason why it you know probably something got something probably knocked off a little tiny component somewhere inside there got in there and it, you can see it's very easy to get inside here and cause trouble for that board. So um, I've seen some other videos where people have uh, moved this board down and then moved the flight controller to the other side of uh, this frame here. Uh, I really don't understand how that works, but uh, it's possible to get this board a little bit further down and maybe protect this board a little bit more with some other parts. Um, you'll have to search for some other videos on that one. I'm not sure. That's going to require a lot of DIY, and I'm not sure how that's done anyway, but I am just kind of pointing out the fact that I think that some people have already accounted for the fact that it's kind of vulnerable and they're doing things in, in terms of DIY stuff to sort of protect the VTX, because I think that's the thing that is going to be pretty vulnerable in crashes. You just want to protect that because um, that's the thing that seems to die quite a bit on these. So in terms of uh, the stock and where you can buy this, uh, I did see this uh, newbie drone for a short time, and now it seems like they have uh, sold out their batches, not there anymore. I'll link that down below and uh, the other stores, uh, you know, uh, as I see them. The only store that I see is still available for pre-order is 
Maker Fire and still on pre-order. It said it would be available in early April. I'm releasing this video in mid-April and it's still in pre-order. So I have a feeling that this part here is kind of hard to get. If you're just interested in the HD0 Eco board and VT, uh, camera and VTX, uh, I believe it's still in stock in Newbie Drone currently by itself. So you can buy that by itself. It's like $80. So I'll link that as well down in the video description. I think some sellers on AliExpress may be selling this, but whether that is uh, actually in stock or they're in pre-order, they don't usually tell you, and so it's going to be hit and miss. I'll just you can check each store. You should contact them directly. I have no information about the stock and inventory of any of the stores. So if you ask me in the comments below, you'll get no response from me because I just don't know. So I'm, I'm responding now ahead of time. I don't know anything about the stock on any particular store. You'll have to contact them directly because I don't know. Anyway, I think that's going to cover for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the review and the information and about my experience on this particular model. And it'll help your decision on whether or not you want to pick this up. I'll link everything down in the video description on all the stuff I talked about down below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.